merchant cash advances versus personal loans, perhaps getting a personal term loan slash installment loan or loans. You have a personal line of credit. You have personal credit cards or business credit cards versus getting advanced a lump sum based on your future receivables. Hi, this is Michael with Viral Funding Solutions. I'm a business loan broker expert, and let me get right into things. So there are two different services, one of them called a merchant cash advance, and then there are personal loans, or you can use them for startups and non-startups for personal loans as opposed to a merchant cash advance that normally you'd like to see at least three months time in business. So before I go into it in depth right now in a second, just know that I have a lot of experience with these services. I have a lot of them, different ones, so I will never jam or push down a product down your throat because it's in my best interest. I look after you. In fact, I care about who you are as a person, as a human first, and then in business. And I don't want you just being that person applying anywhere and everywhere, spraying and praying, shipping and shopping around your credit, whether you know it or not, and that's more harm than good. Even if it's just a soft inquiry, people over-promising, under-delivering, they're overwhelming you. You don't even know why you, or you don't even know why them. Like, why should I work with you? As opposed to me just getting people the best maximum terms, rates, fundability, the early payment discounts, no prepayment penalties, and if there were some, I'll be very transparent soft pulls versus hard credit pulls. A lot of the times it's just soft pulls. And so I'll be very open. I'm very loyal, trustworthy, and reliable. It's like you're talking to a friend or family member. I don't sell you. I don't do those things. That's very eh, yucky to me. And you shouldn't be having to hear that from someone. And I run multiple businesses, so I don't want to just give it to someone that it doesn't make sense to. So the Merchant Cash Advance. That is where you're getting advanced, it's not a loan. It's technically you're getting advanced based on your sales now, but what you could also have in the future. So let's say right now you are doing 30,000 on your lowest month in the last 90 days, or you're currently doing around 25,000, you're averaging 35,000. We could probably lend you between 30, between 75% of that 30,000 to 200%. So you might get at the most 60 to 65,000, and we have to look at more like bank statements. So it's classified as revenue-based financing. All the revenue that's coming into your business. There's a traditional merchant cash advance where a lot of the times they want to look solely at those credit card statements and a few more things. And then there's an encompass of all revenue going into your business as a revenue-based financing service, a hybrid advanced to it. And what they're looking at is advancing you based on everything going into the business. That's cash. That's any kind of transfers, wire, electronic you have any kind of NACH payments, anything going into the business, however you're depositing it into that one primary account, or if it's from business checking to business checking, can we verify it? But get it uh, the routine and the habit down of depositing directly into that one account your sales, and that's what a lot of lenders wanna look at. So with merchant cash advances, let's look at some of the parameters, some of the constraints, primary and secondary constraints. So let's say you go and apply Yes, we're gonna advance you 25,000 because of what you're doing. We look at everything, credits. It's more weight on revenue than it is on credit, but it does have a factor. Bad or good credit is acceptable. And that's what's different about going the credit-based personal loan, business credit card route. But let's say we give you 25,000. Okay, well, you have to pay us back over eight months. Usually it's between four to 24 months or three to 24 months. Um, traditional merchant cash advance is normally between three to 24 months, three to, excuse me, three to 11 months. And the type of repayment structure, it is daily or weekly. Now, that may not already sound attractive. You're like, well, my cash flow is going to suffer. Well, how, why would I want to take a daily repayment? Well, everybody's in a different situation. You may have enough cash flow. It may be your only option. It may be what's most attractive. It makes the most sense because you're going to take that money and you're going to double, triple, quadruple your monthly revenue instead of going backwards. See how that makes sense? So if your repayment is over your benefit, it doesn't make sense to move forward. There are people who just need to cover expenses and maybe that's the fastest way to do it. They probably know they can qualify for something else, but they don't need that much. And so I always recommend try to get something as short as possible so you're not paying more towards the interest, more towards the principal and your overall total cost of financing becomes less expensive that way. It just depends on how you stretch it out. But 25,000, we're gonna give you a factor rate. It's not an APR product, it's not a loan, it's not a traditional bank loan. So we say we give you 25,000, for example, 
Here, let me do a few things here. And I'll go to the comments in a little bit. We give you 25,000 and we're gonna give you a factor rate depending on what you qualify for in our underwriting. So we'll say, hey, you are assessed a higher risk. So we're gonna give you a 1.41 factor rate. And so on that $25,000, you are paying back $35,250 to be exact. And it's a bit fluctuated too, depending on a few other things. But $25,000, can you pay back roughly around $10,000 in the next eight or so months? And so that's not an interest. When you say 1.19 to 1.55 or so, or 1.69, that's not 19 to 55% interest. You can look at it that way. It's just not amortized like that. So you could say, hey, if I'm getting 25,000 and I multiply that by my risk associated because of my credit, my credit is probably 600 or 500. Well, of course you're gonna get you're gonna get a higher rate. How do you expect to get a 1.19 if you don't even fall within that? And there's parameters in revenue and time in business and credit score and so forth where we classify and we say, hey, you're an A-tier lender, you're the best. You got everything, you're depositing, you got 50,000 in monthly revenue on your lowest month as well. You have a 700, plus FICO credit score, you have two plus years time in business, or at least a 675 FICO to get you between 20, 12 to 24 months at that point. Okay, you got it. So we got to look at more. However, is the repayment structure enough? Is the benefit exceeding the repayment? If you're so set upon, hey, you're telling me I got to pay back 25% interest, 30% interest, well, to a business owner who's using that correctly, it makes more sense. And it's daily or weekly. Well, we can micromanage instead of giving you a high monthly repayment at the end of the month. You already have a lot of things on your plate. Whether you do or don't, you have other debt obligations, rent, other properties, mortgages, other things in your expenses. You're paying already 6000 in total. So adding another 5000 is that really justified? So you have at the end of the month, you have this huge eleven to $15,000 repayment? No, you might end up defaulting. Or if you don't, you're going to end up challenging and, and facing challenges because your depositing frequency, if it's already like this, how can we justify giving you a monthly repayment? So really understand your finances. Overall, as a business owner, you got to understand your finances. So I can go even deeper into this advanced product that's mixed with the term loan. There are term loans with monthly, but it's much harder to get those. I wouldn't even sit on those. You have to be cash flowing very heavily. You really have to do more than two years time in business, like five plus years is best. Uh, depositing and revenue 75 to 100,000 and above, 750 and above credit. It has to be spectacular credit and it's harder to get lent that. You may be able to move up to it, but daily or weekly is might better to manage. And it just depends on your frequency and your business on how you deposit. Now, personal loans. I can go on and on about merchant cash advances, the hybrid cash advance, term loan intermix. I'll try to leave more information down below if you're watching this later on YouTube for a replay. Look down below. There will also be a questionnaire form. If you haven't filled that out, please go ahead and do so. What happens is you'll send it in, I'll evaluate, analyze, and give you a proper response back via email on your best funding option and options, thoroughly broken down like nobody else's business. I'll break down per product whether you can or can't qualify. It's all in that email. When you look at it, you'll probably question, why? I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed, but don't be. When you see the first couple of sentences and then we get into the intro before we get into the first service, that's usually the best at the top, you're going to go, I know why he does it that way. Because I'm not wasting energy and time. And so by that, I mean there are a lot of tire kickers, pretenders versus action takers. You can become a pretender and still become an action taker or vice versa. See, it's harder for me to say, hey, I'm going to take a phone call appointment or an inbound or an outbound call if it doesn't make sense. And I'm protecting that. You guys should be too. And so when you get this mode of communication with me, it is me who's doing it. It's very safe and secure. So personal loans, let's look at that now. And this may be more attractive. So a personal loan, you can already get between one to five years. So if you have this merchant cash advance where the underwriting will only qualify me for four to six months, hmm, or only seven to 11 months, but I can get at least one year with a personal loan, hmm. Now it's more than just about the term, it's about the benefit. So you might get more using your bank statements than you were to say, hey, I have my personal tax returns. That's why it's a personal loan. You're using your personal tax returns, usually two years of personal tax returns if you have a current existing business with business bank statements, we can collect those and it'll help your cause. Not always is it asked for, especially if you're a startup. So those two years of personal tax returns will need a full credit analysis. We can do a soft pull on that, on the three 
consumer credit bureaus normally. And what we're looking at to make sure your credit looks fine, and I'll go into some of those parameters right now, but what happens is it could be between one to five years, and I have my laptop here, so I wanna use this as guidance. Let me move over here, and I give this to a lot of people, and I'll show you a very customized and personalized way of understanding this. But you can get between one to five years. The annual revenue requirement, it's different. So you could be generating at least 35, if not 50,000 in annual gross revenue, adjusted gross income. Not a lot to ask for, is it? Requires zero time in business. But how about the trade lines? A lot of them will like to see at least five trade lines established. Sometimes we can go less depending on that user, depending on what kind of balances they have already on their existing credit cards. Is it high balances, things you need to pay off? And does it make sense to work with you? Will that qualify you? So this is more of the credit base. We talked about cash flow, revenue-based financing, one of those options being the cash advance term loan intermixes. Uh, and then we're talking about the personal loans. But outside of that, you have the business lines of credit. Not everybody's gonna qualify for a business line of credit, a true business line of credit, because it's more conservative in this industry. So I'm gonna probably come back to that later. But it's not what I would lead in with right now entirely, especially if you needed more. Certain people can still qualify, but you got to be doing normally in this market 500000 and above in annual gross revenue, have spectacular credit, time in business has gone up, and specifically to the industry. So if you could still get it in attachment with the lump sum, with the line of credit, if it makes sense. But sometimes people choose one over the other because they can get more with one or they can keep a little bit here, use a little bit of the line of credit if they can, if they don't need it for a huge amount. They just use it for a rainy day, et cetera, come back and get more for the lump sum. So... Zero time in business, but a lot of the time requires five trade lines. And I'm using this again as guidance. I already have it here. This is a file I did for a client. And the Experian credit score, you normally want to see a 680 and above. That's why it's credit-based. It's not credit-based just because of personal credit cards and business credit cards. That is not the point. The point is we got to optimize getting you the best amount. Whether you can get them now or not, everybody is missing out on, hey, how does my credit look like internally? How does it all look? What do I need to clean up? Any kind of late payments, anything derogatory, any kind of accounts, old aged accounts, open accounts, make sure I don't close accounts, charge offs. I can go on and on. Bankruptcies, foreclosures, liens. That's just some of it. And so many people, they just disregard their credit and you are not understanding that the credit is actually what can save you in your business, your cash flow and so much more. Instead, you're going to these cash advanced products because you don't have the credit. See, between a 680 and below, like 500 and above qualifies for a lot of these advances or 450 and above, depends on the revenue category. But where are you in that mix? So there's people who fall in between 500 to 670 or 680, don't have that. And so you have to work your way. And so the answer to this is not just go and apply for a business credit card. Well, I got a 625 credit. Sure, feel free to go and apply, but you just wasted an inquiry. A lot of people wasted those inquiries on things that they should have done differently. I've helped out people get business credit cards, personal credit cards, all the time. They always come to me and they help me and I help them in return. That's how it goes. They reciprocate. And then I work with my internal team to get them the best, absolutely the best. Not no shady crap, none of that. Hey, I can get you 9,000. I see that person you applied to is trying to get you six month turns. We could do 5,000 more. I'm the best in my industry and I do what I do. And I heard that the other day from someone else. And where did they go? I talk, spoke to my client. Did that lady ever give you a call like you said she was going to? No. <laughs> what a joke. And even if they were busy, it's like they didn't even give you a heads up or they didn't even when they were so busy, like it happens to me sometimes. I can't always get to an appointment right away. Well, they didn't get back to you. They're, they're baiting switching you. That's what they're doing. And so credit base, and then we'll close up shop here. So less of an annual revenue requirement. When you're seeing things with revenue-based financing, a lot of the times with three months in business, they want to see at least depositing 3000 at the lowest. And then there's another category of 5000 for six months or for three months at least, any, at least six months or four months time in business. So it doesn't necessarily outweigh the 50000 Depends on how much revenue you are generating though. So this may be more convenient. And then that can be verified by taxes or pay stubs. Simple, right? If you have the tax returns or pay stubs or another way to verify your eligibility, that's fine. And then I have a process on how it all works. So don't worry. Like, will they do this? Will they do that? What part of the communication should I be? I got all that. Don't worry. I've been doing this for so many years that my systems, my processes, my automation, clean as ever. 
requirements. So I set some of them now. And then the approval amounts, they can be anywhere between 20 to 300,000, 20 to 500,000, just depends on the type of an option. So sometimes you see a term loan, a personal term loan going up to 300,000. Sometimes we can add on another service to get you that next 200,000 if you qualify for business credit cards, personal credit cards. And see with these term loans, these installment loans, you're stretching it out over one to five years. And even if you have a high cash flowing business and you use your bank statements, you might only get 14 months. But with the personal loan, and then a combination, you're building out your business credit. These are reporting to your business credit at some point, not those other ones, not always a need for it as well. Don't always look at it as like, if it's not building my business credit on that business loan, the term loan. No, that's not the way to look at it. But it stretches out your term. If you qualify for that, it stretches out your term. What does that do? That lowers your repayment. So instead of paying a $500 a day repayment and you're paying it by, by, uh, by uh, bec- uh, weekly, <laughs> by weekly, and I mean just weekly, not bi-weekly, but you're paying, let's say, two to 3000 per week. Is that okay to you? Well, if this is what I needed, okay, we'll work with that. That's fine. Credit. Sorry, low battery, probably paused. But you got to think about it and go, what's my opportunity cost? And then the rates are significantly different. So you can see between 6 to 18%. In this market, I've been seeing like, seven to 15 percent on term loans sometimes higher depending on credit as well because it is weighed on credit even more heavily and if you can qualify for this could i qualify for a business line of credit well it's much harder now so this may be your other route momentarily and then later you go hey i brought up my revenue michael i appreciate working with you and this is what i do i got a plan for you that's so crazy good so depends on the person but let's say you have a personal loan Well, later on, now you're generating over six figures a month or whatever it is. Well, I can use this advance over here to pay off and consolidate, or I can use that to pay off the remaining balances of what I have on my personal loan or what I have going on. Oh my, which I just did with someone. Wow, it's not rocket science, but we don't see these things. We're not paying close enough attention. If you have credit cards, what are you consolidating? How much of the percentage, only as much as 50% of the time can be used to consolidate those kind of things. Everything else has to be used for other reasons. And so if you're using it to pay off expenses, credit cards, that's fine. That personal loan may be able to work. That's one of the best solutions. Another one is an SBA loan, which I'll get into in a moment. But 6 to 18% cost of capital as opposed to a cash advance where you're paying 19 to 70% interest. APR, 6 to 18% or so, 7 to 15% you see in this market a lot of times. But those APRs for those cash advances can go up to 300, 400%. Now, I'm not saying that's bad. It just depends on the person, how they look at it. You're not in position. It's not you. If that person is, then they are. A restaurant business owner not too long ago took $200,000, generating $400,000 now. They raised the revenue. Now they're going to come back getting renovation money, helping them out. Simple. They like the service. They like the speed. They like the speed of underwriting. The less of their documentation or what they have on their business bank statements, how they can leverage that. The relationship, not only with me, but my team. And so much more. So 24 hours, one to two weeks, it's time to approve and fund. I've seen it in this market as well be somewhere between two to four, but sometimes three to five weeks, depend on the extent of how we have to look at your credit as well as how far we have to go to make sure you get those funds from different facilities or different lenders and organizations. But we can help you and we protect your credit and all that at the end of the day. So 24 hours, one to two weeks, you could see it realistically. And that's kind of what you see even with the business line of credit. Like you see one to three days, if not a week, sometimes seven to nine or so days. And then you get a soft pull initially a lot of the time for a pre-approval. To get hard offers, there are cases where you will see a hard pull, but that's not a bad thing to say. Not always, but it's not bad because you're going to be getting something when you look at it and you go, that's fine. I don't mean getting getting docked down a little bit of points just to get this. If it's also being used to save money, people get it to get it for um, mortgages. They were wanting to save money. They're transitioning. Maybe they're using it for a down payment. Maybe they're using it to purchase the equipment along with working capital, along with expansion funding. So it's a very attractive solution to the right client. Now, the origination fee, that depends on the type of service in the lender. But you've seen somewhere between 15%, even less it could be, on the total cost of what we could get you. And that's fine. Well, you got to think about it. What's my payoff? Even if it's 15%, I wouldn't mind if I know I'm taking this money, let's say we've got 80,000 off that, what it was on the 15% on 
of what I got originally before the 15% was added. Okay, well, I'm taking this money anyways, and I'm going to use it to my benefit. And I'm going to go with that. And I'm getting a better term and rate. So why would I be complaining? And so you have to keep in mind the benefit exceeding your repayment, as I mentioned here. So some important details on the personal side of the equation have less than 35% utilization mostly. Uh, minimal recent inquiries. We don't want to see too many. If you guys know about credit, keep it as minimal. I would say below three, at most three on per each credit bureau over six months, over a year. Try not to be over leveraged. And it depends again on the lender organization and what we're looking at. Strong credit history, that's number one priority. Like you could have late payments, you can have these things that get removed, but if you don't have sufficient credit worthiness, like how do we know you'll be able to pay us back? What have you shown? Yeah, it doesn't show you've been making enough on those auto payments. You've actually been going backwards. It's not, not enough of a high payment to tell us that you can afford getting this amount of money or we have mortgages here, we have these other accounts, student loans, whatever it is. Other loans, business loans, things that have already been terminated, perhaps removed, but the lenders can kind of see this stuff still. So no recent negative items based on debt to income ratio hugely. That's how you get determined also on what you get. High debt to, debt, debt to income ratio, excuse me, very little you get. Highest, none. Very little, bigger chance, more funding, and there's more things we look at. Try not to have too many recent new trade lines, open new trade lines I can do more harm than good. I've had that a lot with clients told them not to some of them just didn't know before because nobody else educated them on this try not to have other loans you just took out as it can raise your debt to income obviously and utilization to get you nothing or perhaps way less we can try to combine it with other types of financing if need be like for an equipment loan scenario or another business line of credit perhaps we can work on it if your debt to income ratio isn't too high i've even seen it with some cases with like a home equity line of credit or home equity loans and so I'm not going to get into so much of what we need, but you guys kind of heard about it. And there may be a little bit more to verify, like color picks front and back of your ID, most recent utility bill in your name sometimes, just a proof of income, voided personal check in your name where the money will be deposited, very substantial. Uh, but let me come up here. And there are different options, and I'll close up in just about a couple of minutes. So yeah, I spoke about the personal term loans for business you can use. Uh, and it can be in lieu of or as an add-on to other unsecured business financing where we add multiple business credit cards, personal credit cards, a line of credits, a few other things that you can be eligible for if, if so. And over here, I just spoke about the low documentation. Just need proof of identity and proof of income. If W-2 employee, you will need the last two pay stubs. Natural. If self-employed, you will need most recent business and personal tax returns. Banks will go by adjusted gross income as well as we have private lenders, et cetera, institutions. Number two, unsecured, this program is completely non-collateralized, but every application still requires the personal guarantee of the applicant. That's fine, the cash advance the same way. But the difference is, like I said, the term, the rates. Yeah, you might get funding faster in the other one, but what's the payoff? What are you trying to do? What's your accomplishment? And I'll help you. So typical results, this is an aggregate, and I've seen this too, from myself as well, being in this. This is an aggregate program requiring multiple accounts to meet our pre-qualification. The combined total amounts are from 25 to 300,000, but they can even go higher, but that's per applicant. Type of funding, the funds will, can be used for business purposes, but this program is based entirely on consumer financing, consisting of mostly term loans. They're also known as installment loans, but sometimes it includes the line of credit, excuse me. And then we will check with writing capability. All accounts will report on personal credit. Good, not bad. Depends on the individual, of course. But five, interest rates, as we spoke about, typically you see APR, annual percentage rates, between 7 to 15%, depending on your credit worthiness. And the selected term applicant, as in yourself, will be presented with an offer of three, five, or seven year terms from which to choose from, even more or less. Pre qualifying, 680 FICO, and over 35, sometimes 50,000 in annual gross income, adjusted gross income. But an actual pre qualification will depend on debt to income ratio, 680 and above FICO, Experian. And 35K plus income does not guarantee eligibility. It's better to have a 680 on all three. Timing. The process can take sometimes, like I said, one to two weeks, depending on what you're getting and issued, or three to five weeks, plus or minus, depending on your situation. Success fee. No upfront application or hidden costs and all that crap, or no recurring fees. Once the funding has been established with you, the company, and then myself included, is due, or excuse me, as in your point of view, is due a success fee, which is a percentage of the total aggregated, excuse me, let me back up there. 
I was reading this and this is also what I was doing for the ERC stuff just recently. So I have the two uh, mixed there. But this is what the actual company that's lending you, the merchant, giving you and they're being due their success fee, which is a percentage of the total aggregated funding up to the maximum flat, uh, flat fee, flat rate fee, flat fee. The success fee can be paid with the new funding that you have as well. So that's an advantage. So if you want to pay it off with that, it's kind of like a an origination in a way that you're not paying that one to two percent off of what you're getting in total. It's just being subtracted from. But this is actually paying off the success fee. I know it can sound a little bit confusing, but once we go through that, you'll understand it. So soft credit pool. If yourself as the applicant doesn't have an account with the credit monitoring website where you can share your report with us, myself and my and team, my team included, we can run credit without a hard inquiry. And we have our systems to do this. It's very safe and secure. And then how to get started, I go into this. If this is something you'd like to do, there are processes, there's probably a digital application. And you can also send me a PDF of your full credit report. Just Experian is fine. You can send all three. I don't misuse this information. It's very confidential. I've never done that before, never. And so you can send over your Experian credit score to myself or number two, here's another option you have. And this is what a lot of people can do too. And we'll get it on our back end. Simply email or click the link below if I have a link to show you your full name, home address and date of birth. So I slash we can pull soft credit pool of your credit. This option is preferable than the first one. The soft pull has no impact on your credit, no inquiry. And I put here as an addition, no worry. We also have a bridge loan situation to meet pay down requirements. And as a liquidation partner, if you need to convert your credit lines into pure cash, that's liquidating the cash out of those 0% interest credit cards and more. So I show you guys a link. There's more services right there. The pay down loan option. And here's another thing. There's 401k IRA financing. This is an additional component we could add by itself or on top of getting a personal term loan with more. See how much flexibility you guys are already getting? Whoa, I, 401k IRA financing, stocks and bonds and mutual funds. Whoa, but does the risk make sense? What are you using those funds for? So if we could take time to optimize your credit instead of going into a home equity line of credit, why don't we do a personal term loan? Even if your credit isn't where you want it to be, let's optimize that. Let's get it back up. If it takes a form of credit repair, I work with the best in this industry, by the way. He's recommended me quite a few times, so I'm very grateful and humble. I did a review of him and his service and how he's done very well. And I'm just so humble that he's been able to recommend me to people. And I've been very helpful. And I do believe in my heart that I'm at the best at what I do. And I don't sell you. I don't, I'm don't. I'm an introvert. When you hear me or you hear from me, I'm not here like this talking I'm doing this for the purpose of it's helping you understand video content better. But when I'm not here, I'm blogging, I'm emailing, customizing, systematically, mathematically, doing all of these things that you probably don't want to even know about. Or you want to know, but to a degree, because of what I know, it might confuse you. And that's not what I mean to do. And I can say it in a more generic way. So I'm going to go to the comments in just a moment. But we have other things here where we're looking at, let me move this up. So there are things when we're looking at getting you like business credit cards, personal credit card combination, even with a term loan. Uh, credit score, 680 is best. Credit history, at least one open bank credit card, not a store card. You guys know which ones I'm talking about. Over two years old and with a 3K limit or higher or a mortgage of three plus years old. This is also very apparent, especially for non-startups, for, excuse me, startups, who look for equipment financing with an A-tier lender, we're looking at, are they an owner? Do they have a mortgage? But this one here is over two years old with a card, an open bank card, not a closed one, with a 3K limit or higher, or a mortgage of three plus years. So either one. So that's very flexible. I'm sure everybody has a credit card. Now, is it a credit builder card or what are they? Like, you got to understand these things. And then if you're not there, we'll get you optimized so you can get there. No bankruptcies less than five years old, ex exception. We'll look at the reports with bankruptcy if it's scores above a 700 and bankruptcy has been discharged over four over five years. Without any negative sense, we'll need to know which banks were included in the bankruptcy. No unpaid open collections or liens, a huge one. A lot of people have these. Any unsatisfied tax liens, judgments, or collections must be cleared prior to approval. Unsatisfied basically means unsettled or unnegotiated. Un That's the except. This is the exception. Open medical collections are sometimes acceptable if other variables are strong. It's in a case-by-case -case basis, and I've seen these a lot. Five, no late payments within the last 12 months. Sometimes you'll see even within the last six months, it's more flexible, but 
sometimes even within the recent 30 days, some SBA loan providers, but it's hard, guys. It's credit. You miss one payment, even if it was cleared and it's been a month due, like that can alone disqualify you. So now you understand why people get cash advances. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean because they have a late payment that they'll get approved for a cash advance as well because a part of it is the credit. So if we see you don't have credit eligibility, not as extensive, you can have uh, no more than five negative days in any of the last 90 days or no more than five non-sufficient funds. And then a few more things we can work with. But no late payments within the past 12 months, no more than four inquiries within the past 12 months. These would be inquiries for revolving credit and or MCA financing, merchant cash advance financing. If any of the inquiries that are up to four resulted in too many new accounts, they may not qualify, as in yourself. So think about the accounts that you just opened or what you have aged. And if you're not even taking care of that, what makes us think you'll be able to take care of us? But Michael, if I got 50,000, I'll be able to turn that into 100,000. Name a time, place, and when. Okay, but at the same time, they're not basing it off of that. You might have the best business plan. Exception, does not include inquiries for automobile or mortgage financing. These do not impact review unless they are excessive. That's the only point. No charge-offs less than two years old. Uh, when the credit is below 670 or 680, it's due to high balances slash utilization or unseasoned accounts. Unseasoned accounts. That's the only way. Then it's okay to make an introduction from me to my lender or my providers. If the client yourself states that your credit score is below 670, in this market we see 680, Please send information over and I'll be able to review as well as with my team. And then I can go into that soft credit pool in the background and determine if an introduction is worthwhile and to move to the next step. Otherwise, what you would want to do, and this is very obvious, explore the cosigner credit partner. Cosigner, you probably heard of cold borrowers. That's a bit different. But cosigner, credit partner option, a business partner, a spouse, a family member, etc. And the rest is just how to get started, as I mentioned earlier. So I'm going to leave it at this. Get a credit partner. Get somebody who can guarantee, get a guarantor. Everybody right now is doing that. I have, if I went through my whole email list today on who's doing that, who I communicated that with, my goodness. And so if you are lacking credit, do you have a spouse? Do you have a family member, a friend that's going to be helpful and say, hey, I trust you. I trust Jerome. I trust Juan. I trust Sally, whoever it is. And they're going to take that impact. Whoa, there's people who I would go, no. So these are the things you got to look at when we're going through personal loans and merchant cash advances. It was a bit of a lengthy video. I could have done this on screen, but I wanted to show it to you guys or do it this way. Um, Origination fees and success fees. We already spoke about that. Uh, The utilization. Spoke about that if approved. And what would be required for specific lenders and organizations. Some of them expect a 700 plus personal credit score. Uh, through your bureau, soft pull credit report, just to see uh, for term loans up to 300000 a lot of the times. No business is required. Unsecured rates, we can go low. Flexible terms, monthly payments. That's another thing. You get monthly payments. Personal loans, business credit cards, and these options, monthly. Can you take on that monthly, though, and it's going to stretch it out? That's when you look at it and go, the cash advance, I would have got 6000 monthly repayment. So you're telling me on a personal loan that I'm getting a contract for that I'm going to be paying... 2500 or stretch over two to three years if I got that. And how much am I getting? Well, wait, wait. No, the cash advance, I needed to get 80000 now. I'm only going to get approved for 50000 here. Can I add that on top of this? It may not be possible because of what you have, debt to income and what you just took out of the loans. Over time, maybe, months and months and months, maybe three plus months or so down the road, sometimes even earlier. But I look at it and I go, I'll do it. For 50K, and the merchant cash advances, they don't report to business credit bureau, so what are you missing out on? And so if I go, okay, I know how to find that other 30K, that's fine. I'm going to get business credit cards. Actually, I got approved for one for 20K with Chase, and I got another 10,000 here. Yay, I'm at 80K. But it's about how you use it. So just make sense of these things, and they're a monthly repayment. Five to seven year payback length you've seen at times. No prepayment penalties. I went through the requirements, uh, tax return requirements for the 0% interest. Credit cards you see 6 to 18, 6 to 12 months. A lot of them stay on 6 to 12 months. Uh, No minimum length of time. 
Stated income, no income verification for some of them. Credible, excuse me, commercial lenders reports to business credit. Huge advantage. Does not report to personal credit on specific ones when you're getting business credit cards. It's not disassociated. Requirements, sometimes you see here, business entity, S Corp, C Corp, LLC, partnership. Sole proprietor could work, but it's much harder to. So it's better to have those for business credit card services. Uh, registered and in good standing with the state of registration, articles of incorporation. I think you guys know where I'm going with this. 700 plus personal credit, sometimes 680, and that's it. And so let me get quickly into the SBA and I'll let you guys go. So if you're a startup, and you have a business plan, you have it set in place, even if you didn't, you know what you want to do. You're not buying, you're not purchasing, you're not, you don't have an acquisition for a franchise. But I know I want to start up a new business. So you can go through an SBA 7A loan. However, do you have 25 to 30% equity injection? We can call it a down payment, but there's more overall total transaction costs when that's all readjusted. Appraisals if we're doing buildings or we're doing anything else, environmental things with buildings and land. Or if it's not any of that, we're looking at other components. So do you have enough? And like recently, I have somebody in the medical surgical space looking to open up a new practice, a new entity, disassociated from their current one or current ones. And they're going to go through the SBA with me. He should do very well. He has the equity injection. He has the experience. And those are the two things that the SBA 7A looks at. Do you have experience? Well, you know, I was an employee, but I... You know, they want to know the extent of what you did. They don't want to just know you were an employee. What kind of impact or what kind of influence did you have over this, over that, overseeing this and that? You have a family member who's in this. Okay, that works a little bit better. But what kind of experience? Even if it's not correlated, like what have you ran? Have you ran as a supervisor? Have you done an ownership role in the past? Do you already have another business? That's even better. So personal loans, you have SBA loans, merchant cash advances, equipment loans, you have so many of them, but what I recommend, since we're talking about personal versus merchant cash advances, just understand where you sit. Can you wait? There's people who come back to me and go, Michael, I'm going to, I had to revise everything. After everything you gave me, I'm like, it's better that I look at my plan. And so they disappear or two, they give me feedback and they go, hey, Michael, when I increase my revenue, I'd like to come back to you. Let's see now if they're loyal and they follow through. See, I don't have a problem. It's the people I work with that do. See, I'm an entrepreneur, not just a business owner. So I'm analyzing things that you don't even say. And it shows me who you are. You reveal your true colors. Just this morning, I'll tell you guys and I'll leave with this. I sent a questionnaire last night, a little bit after five, it was like 5.05, to a client. This is what I always do for everybody. You get your questionnaire back, go look for it. I'll remind you it's there. Sometimes I follow up with a quick text, not to push you or anything. Hey, I sent you an email with the subject line. Today, spontaneously, I don't normally give you a call like the day after. I won't do that. I'm not a phone call person. I do it well, but I don't want to be doing that if we don't have to. My processes, my systems, and automation are different and better for a lot of things. You'll do. They didn't pick up. They call me back. Hello? Hi. And I said their name. This is Michael, the business loan broker. How are you doing, basically? And so without even saying that last part, like the how you are doing, because I usually do say it, this time I didn't. So I was like, hey, hi, this is, or hi, their name. This is Michael, the business loan broker. And you would think they'd know. A lot of the times, like 99.99% of the time, the people do know. I don't assume they will know. But this time I just didn't say, how are you doing? Immediately. Like I usually do 100% of the time. So it just happened at that point. So Nothing wrong there, just introducing myself. But immediately, that person was like, no thanks. And there was a brief pause. I didn't say anything. And they just hung up. I gave them the chance to just hang up the phone. I didn't do it before them. Now, to me, that's not necessary. Yeah, could I have said, how are you doing? Of course. That was the only time I've missed it in like a long time. Very long time. And it wasn't like intentionally. It was just sometimes it happens. It's fine. And so that could have been the second point. But having somebody fill out my questionnaire, and I even send them a text, like, why would you even bother filling out my questionnaire? And that was kind of rude because it shows me who they are as a person. 
I don't care what you do in your business. I do care, but I don't. I want to know who the person is. Like somebody who's so excited to submit documentation. Where do they go? They disappeared. Oh, they underestimated it. Well, I really wanted the service, but we were asking for your two years of personal tax returns. And when do you think I can expect to receive your application and your documents by? Sometimes I'll ask, not always. But if you're working with me, if you were my broker and I trusted you, I'm not just going to anybody. I have to trust you. And to trust from me giving it to you, mm -mm. it's not that easy. And so why I say this is because if you worked with me, I needed an SBA loan. Yeah, I know Jerome. I know Sally. Of course I do. They've opened up a little bit to me, at least, who they are and then their business. What do they do? Are they a true leader? Or are they just somebody who's following and doesn't really know their stuff? Because I'm going to vet them in. I'm going to want to know all that. I'm going to challenge them. Sorry, 10% battery here, and I'll get going. But if I'm giving my business to someone, they better take care of me. They better know everything. I'm not going to go to a rookie anymore. That doesn't work. And so if I'm giving you that, just know that, hey, what do I need? Let me go to my CPA. Oh, here, I got it right here. I can send it back to you tomorrow if the latest between one to two days. Okay, boom, 24 hour turnaround, it's in the email or it's already sent over to the lender how it's supposed to be asked for. How hard is it to do that? No, nah, then people just scratching their butt and just walking around like this, like that guy just spoke to me and needs returns and you know, I'm gonna do what I can do, you know what I mean? And I'm gonna just send it to him and whenever he gets it, he gets it, he better be happy with it, you know? What, what kind of talk is that? See, that's neg that's, even though you don't realize it, that's negative, that's comfort talk. See, that's not, I'm growing. That's, I'm getting comfortable. So even if it's a challenge, I'm always looking for ways of challenging myself. There's always new things that I'm discovering in this business and my other businesses. Every day, you guys were in my world, how I operate my businesses, how punctual and disciplined I have things. Do you guys have that in line? All I need is three months of bank statements. Okay, I'm going to send them over to you in the next 24 seconds. <laughs> Holy crap, What? Boom, here, it's already in one drive. Here, let me forward it over, done. Simple. Not, hey, I'm gonna scratch my butt, put this application in and then disappear for a year. Who do you think you are? That's not right. It's not nice, it's very rude. It's being unaccountable, irresponsible. Maybe it's a blend of being cocky. Maybe it's something where you're arrogant. Maybe it's a form of something else. Maybe you don't have any of that, and that's fine. But I will get to know who that person is. Without even a word that's said, I can already understand. The person who did the hang-up today and wasn't open to at least me saying one more thing, I wasn't going to take up any of their time, just one or two minutes, and that was it. I was just going to say, hey, their name, I sent you your email questionnaire. I just wanted to know if you received it. That's it. Period. Done. This is why I do it that way. And people question why I don't get on calls with them. I don't mentor them that way. Quit crying. You got to conform to what I'm doing and I'm going to take care of you. It's not like I got to meet you 50-50 all the time. You got to meet me 80%. 80% on my part, 20% on your part. Because of the systems that I have. And I'm going to take care of you, like I said, not to just keep reiterating it. So that'll be everything. Let me go to the comments, see if there's anything here. Hmm. I saw this earlier. Oh, I think I accidentally invited somebody as I was trying to scroll. It says here, are you a priest? <laughs> I think you guys know the answer to that. No, but it would look that way. I like having an undershirt uh, for many reasons. I mean, it's just something that I'm accustomed to. I mean, you can say you feel more comfortable um, body-wise, but it's not just the body-wise component. It's, I like having that underneath. If it's not for warmth, it's for many reasons. I'm not going to walk in like a Rico Suave without an undershirt and pretend that I'm looking like something that I'm not. Good question, Jovan. What do I do for a living? 
So I have multiple businesses. So this one, I'm a business loan broker. I'm an independent business loan broker slash agent. And so what I do is I connect business owners slash entrepreneurs who need money for building, growing, expanding, and even getting out of a tight pinch to the right lender, to the right underwriters. Not all are created equally. I can review the documents. I look at it from the eyes of a pre-underwriter, or excuse me, as an underwriter. So I know what those underwriters want. And that's how I look at it myself. When I see all of these different services and files coming through, I know this is the one that needs to go for this lender. I know we need to look at least these two lenders. And this is what they would see. And then digital marketing agency, affiliate marketing businesses, one in the health space. I have another venture in the health space as well now. And a few other ones. 30 more seconds. Does anybody have anything? Some people will be kind of put off by this. Oh, this guy's just too punctual. He's, he's probably too good for me. That's not what I meant. Don't mistake in my words. See, you're hearing one thing. See, that's being close-minded. That's probably not being in a position like this ever. So you get defenseless. Or defensive. Well, defenseless. But you get defensive. And I'm not being mean. I'm not being aggressive. See, this is what people want. People want to hear it like this sometimes. Not am I like this all the time. I'm never. My tonality needs to come up. Because if it didn't, you guys wouldn't do anything. Would you? Ven pa' acá, mijo. Come here. Come here. It's okay. Three years later, just send it to me. You think that would do any good? Sometimes. Okay, everybody. No questions. Appreciate you guys. Thank you for following. I did see that. I did see the hearts, the likes. I'm very tired. As an introvert, I can say I'm exhausted. Understatement. I'm going to go relax, lay down, cool my head. Think about some of these things. Do things to keep my mind away from this for now for a little bit. And then get back to you guys. I'll be releasing content on YouTube here soon. I'll also be releasing one on the business loan questionnaire. So look out for that. I'll be sending it on. I already made these videos. So I'll, I'll be uploading one soon on my process. So you can even type in business loan questionnaire on YouTube eventually, soon enough, and it should pop up. And you'll see why when you come through someone like me, so powerful. Um, and because I'm the guy, think about it. The mastermind behind everything is a person working behind the scenes, usually a lot of the time. That's me. But nowadays, because I'm an independent in this space, and what I do, I have to go out there and market for myself. And because I have those skills from the digital marketing agency. And not everybody has that, hey, I got 500 people on my team. Let's just get the guy who just markets and we'll get the actual brain behind everything behind it. And so with myself and my internal team, we go to work for you. All right, everybody. Thank you all for tuning in. Bio, description to get started, questionnaire, and much more. Appreciate you all. Talk to you all in the next one. Bye.